crisp, fresh spring morning from the ostrich pen. Uh, this is the breeder herd again. Uh, seven hens, two roosters. All uh, ready to start another good season, I hope. So they're eating their breakfast right now. I brought out one of the feeders again now. I've just got to go dig the other one out. It's still frozen in in the corner of a corral right now, but I'll bring that out and then they'll have the two piles of grain in feeders and then I'm going to build a rack for their alfalfa hay so that uh, when I feed that to them, it's up off the ground. But for now, uh, they do keep their uh, standard area, or their, their most frequently traveled areas, fairly smoothly packed down. So it's a nice, smooth, clean surface for them for the most part. I do move around and I rake up and then I move around to a different area now and then for a while just to give... Uh, the sunshine a chance to sterilize some of those things now and then try to keep uh, some cleanliness going on because as we know uh, the animals do whatever they do all over the ground and don't really seem to care for their own ma part so that is taken into account I do have to fix up my fencing a little bit here this spring there's that's the thing with page wire. It's fairly easy for ostriches to snag with their toes and run into and stretch. And it's uh, a cheap fence, but it does take a lot of maintenance. So you can see a lot of sagging going on here. And I have to get out my stapler and go to work on re, uh, retensioning all these panels. And this chunk of barbed wire along here is not well barbed wire is not something you want around ostriches a whole lot but i use it just around the feed areas because i have horses running loose on the property and the single strand of barbed wire across the top of the feed area just prevents the horses from pushing their way in to steal the birds breakfast it uh, saves me a lot of work and for the most part you know it doesn't i haven't had it damage any birds yet so cross my fingers and hope that uh, keeps up. Oh, the truck on the highway has some flapping tarps and it just panicked the birds a little. So they're, they're settling down quickly again. There we go. They're normally not too flappable with uh, familiar stuff, but every once in a while they'll get panicked by something unusual for the moment. When they do, of course, Fences, people, whatever in front of them can uh, take a hit. I've seen them run right through a two by four like it's not even there. They are fairly strong creatures. But luckily this, uh, back to the fencing, I, uh, it uh, the page wire may not be pretty and it may take some maintenance, but it is tough enough to withstand some springing back and, you know, it generally holds them in pretty well. I had a breakout yesterday. One of the roosters was a little too exuberantly chasing girls and went right through a gate. But what happened was he went through, um, as you can see, where I need a gate, I just staple another post on, cut the fence, and put my wire loops top and bottom, and there you have it, a basic farm gate. So he went through one of these over uh, up there a little bit, and... What he did was basically just rip apart the ends of the wire and pull out a few staples and stuff that wasn't secure enough. It was a bit of a haphazard, you know, quickly done gate that had never been reinforced. So came out and led him right back in again with a bucket of grain and uh, stapled it back up again and we we're back on track. But um, that's one thing with ostriches. If they do get out, generally they don't seem to go far from home. In my experience, all they want to do is get back into their familiar space. So they hang around right around the fence lines that they're familiar with. And as soon as you open a gate, they are more than willing to step back inside. Especially if you lead them in with a bucket of grain or some kind of treats. Because they, you just can't run around behind and expect to herd ostriches. It just won't, isn't going to happen for you. You've got to lead them and uh, hope they follow. And the more familiar they are with you, the better they'll follow you, of course. Um, the issue I do have with that is 
that uh, the males in particular really aren't keen on other males unless they're very mild-mannered sorts. So if um, there's a man running around working on things, they are most likely going to get very, very territorial and strut their stuff and consider it a hostile invader. Um, so I had some help trying to put him in the pen yesterday and the help had to go hide behind a truck and stay quiet till I had him corralled because it just wasn't going to happen if he... the bird was going to be com a competitive male attitude all the way and wasn't going to cooperate with me so or with with us so I had to go it alone and then it was not a problem he's biggest problem I had was Clark being a lover, not a fighter, he was sitting down and dancing for me instead of following me. I had to stop and wait for him a few times. So. <laughs> yeah, last fall, uh, when I brought, well, just as the snow was about to start, I brought those three-year-old hens up here to join the breeder herd. And they came from, oh, probably about three or four hundred yards away in some other pens way down over the hill there. So they really we're not familiar with seeing anything up in this direction. So uh, myself and a friend grabbed a bucket of grain each and we both baby talk them and play with them all the time. So they're, they knew us and uh, we just very slowly held the bucket of grain out and kept encouraging them to follow us. And every once in a while they'd decide they were outside their comfort zone and they would go running back towards their old uh, pens, but with some persistence of standing out in the field with our buckets of grain and calling them, they would keep coming back to us. And eventually we got them up here and into the, I have a double gate, kind of a foyer leading into the corral up around the corner. And they followed us right into there. And then I was able to just let them into the main pasture with the other birds. So that's how we go about moving them here is just encouragement and uh, leading them along with some grain and treats. They can be hooded and pushed along by a couple of people or you can get them into trailers and haul them in you know your average horse trailer or stock trailer will work but yeah for just on the home place we let them uh, follow us and follow our buckets and take our time and we eventually get where we're going. So there's a little bit of a theory on moving ostriches to where you want them to go. Hopefully uh, next time I have somebody out I will remember to pull my camera out or have the opportunity to pull my camera out and we can get some demonstrations going on that. But for now hopefully that will help you with uh, any issues you might have. Bye for now! And now I'm out with my juveniles. These are last summer's chicks. Hey guys, watch my fingers, okay? Don't take my camera and don't pinch my fingers. Now, trying to stay ahead of my babies and they want to snuggle so bad. These suckers are six, seven feet tall now. They were all hatched out between June and October last year. And uh, they're just out running around here, enjoying some sunshine, learning how to graze. And uh, because I don't have a lot of green sprouts yet, I've been bringing out nice leafy green alfalfa hay and letting them learn how to graze off piles of that out in the field. So these are <laughs> checking my empty bucket and following Maggie and I around. These are what? <laughs> mostly pretty big. There's still a couple of smaller ones. They're only about four or five feet tall, but they catch up pretty quick. By the end of summer, they'll be pretty close. <laughs> yes, big suckers. Hey, big suckers. And Maggie loves her babies. She's been friends with these guys since they were first hatched. She likes to say hello to them when they first come out of the hatcher. And she keeps a close eye on them every step of the way. She's so gentle with chicks, it's funny. Well, ouch. Got my finger and my camera all in one bite. Okay, guys. That's the hazards of filming ostriches, is you're going to lose cameras and you're going to lose fingers on a regular basis. I took my gloves off to handle the camera, now i got to keep my sleeve over my hand <laughs> to go save my fingers. <laughs>
But so they've got their grains and pellets in the in a feeder back in the barn that they got earlier this morning. And the water is all back in the corral. Okay, camp. Hey, camera went flying. It's got mud on the side packed into the case. You guys are very challenging to get pictures of, huh? Now come on, sweeties. Hey, just walk through you. There we go. All right, so back in the barn, they've got their feed, their uh, grain and pellets, and back in the corral is their water. So out here is just grazing on fresh green shoots and alfalfa. So we're going to, Maggie and I are gonna pick up our bucket and head on back out of here and let, there's 30 of these chicks in here right now. We're gonna leave them to eat their breakfast and roam around and watch traffic go by without us for a while. Got lots more things to do. So thanks for watching.